There were days where every detail fell into place without provocation, and then there were those days that were so dang stubborn I couldn't even take a step without it blowing up in my face. Today, it had been a mixed bag, with me being stuck babysitting a grown woman while fixing a mess caused by another grown woman. But this woman let all that go when my phone began ringing with some good news once we reached the marina. Relieved, I promised. Thank you so much. I'll deliver the contracts by tomorrow. I ended the call and slid my phone into my messenger bag. That was the manager of Moy's Island. We have our island. Lyrica perked up. Is that the one with the small resort? Yes. The resort is far enough away from the private beach we have permission to use that nosy guests shouldn't be an issue. Oh, that's on fleek. She bobbed her head as we crossed the street to where we'd parked. Sunbaked and parched, Lyrica and I grabbed a late lunch at a local favorite called Paige's Okra Grill. She thought the name was simply fabulous, and I had to agree with her. While chowing down on crab cake sandwiches, we discovered they catered, which was also on my list of to-dos for the filming schedule. To celebrate the accomplishments, we split a giant piece of coconut cake and declared it the best cake we'd ever put in our mouths. I decided maybe Lyrica was tolerable after all. We need to head over to Shem Creek Inn, I told her, studying the handwritten scribbles from Delaney that Wit passed along to me. Luckily, she'd handed over the research file after he fired her. Why? Is that where we're staying tonight? Lyrica scraped the leftover icing off the plate with her spoon, finishing it off before handing the dish over to the waiter. I shrugged. It's summertime, so it's doubtful. Yeah, that's a popular place, the waiter interjected. Dressed in a black shirt and pants, he was probably around Lyrica's age, but with less color and flair. Can I get you anything else? Actually, I motioned him a little closer. Even though we had work to get to, I couldn't resist inquiring about that peculiar island. Do you happen to know anything about Indigo Isle? Reserved recognition eased across his young face. Just that my dad made me promise to never go messing around it. Why's that? I asked. He looked around, checking his other tables. Locals say there's a monster who haunts the island. A lady at the table next to ours called for him, holding up an empty glass. That's really all I know. He shrugged offering a smile along with the check, and went about his business.